everybody and welcome back to book club today we are reading chapters 10 through 14 i believe yes i stopped with chapter 14 and we're going to be discussing the main points mainly the highlights um i'm going to call this reading the light keeper because that's mainly what these chapters are about all right so yeah elias looked up and down the hall and slowly entered the room have a seat kira pointed at a chair and grabbed some gum from her desk she started in a noxious chew and plopped onto her bed. Elias shut it. I plopped down beside her, stared about the room, rather tidy as universities went. My gaze fixed on the painting of Jesus hanging on the wall. I pointed at the frame. Why is he here? My roommate, my roommate. She says it keeps her from doing something stupid. Don't believe it. He's a nine god. I hadn't always believed that. My early years were filled with simple prayers and church steeples and real belief. Dad said God was real, so it had to be so. Mom tried to keep her up, keep up the act after yes, death, and she was writing at charades. Besides, a fiction, a fiction only willing to bring his own son back to life, life did little good for me. Little good for little. This team. picture could not be counted on. Dad once said that since little Thomas was born different, he'd have a special place in non God's heart. But Jesus, Dad, and little T all disappeared on the same day. I hadn't seen any of them since. I wrapped my arm around Kira's shoulder. There are things I need to say and explain. There are reasons I haven't texted, and I don't understand all of them myself, but I need you. I don't have any right to ask you for help after these last days, but there it is. She whispered into my ear. He is kind of a nut, you know, at first glance. And second and third. And she was wow. like, sorry. Kira, well, look at him. Elias stood, his hands folded, and his eyes said, Yes, I smiled. Look at him. Kira sighed, Okay, out with it. What can little old me possibly provide for you? My money. What I just read was an excerpt. Uh, it's page 96 in the book, Both of Me, which is the book that we've been reading for the last couple book clubs. This is today's third, I mean, this is a book club's third reading for both of me because I'm reading about four chapters at a time. I read five chapters this time because I didn't read uh, chapter nine last uh, last reading, so it's nine through fourteen. And yeah, and the, the reason why I picked this one is because of Little T. Like there in my life, I said there were some similarities between the book, um, both of me, and the things that I've been going through in my life. So. Little T and then the symbol for like uh, Teen Titans or just the T symbol in itself has kind of a special meaning for me because of what I've been going through. It's kind of like a, a calling card that's been left in my life in a few ways and it's something that I really want to get rid of and I'm kind of glad that it's gone. But yeah, like, um, I don't know, but like I said, uh, Little T stands for Thomas and apparently Thomas disappeared along with his father and her father. And so it's it's important to her that um, she makes it known that the idea of God and what God can do for you and the focus that God had, the importance that God plays in your life disappeared when those people disappeared from her life. So it kind of hurt her terribly. So it, um, from what I can get from this Justice page, it damaged her into, into it damaged her in a way that she doesn't exactly believe in God so much anymore. And so, yeah, important. With me, um, I have I have a kid with a medical issue. Uh, it related to some things that have happened to us recently, uh, head injuries or whatever. And he's been gone from my custody for like two years. And I don't really like it. You know, I don't really like it. So, in a way, it makes me feel like God is not ever present in my life and his life at all. If he could have a kid suffer so much at the hands of someone else when he did so well in the arms of his own mother. You know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like rejected. I feel jilted. I feel um, disrespected by God in a way that I, that I you know, I just want to go to heaven and sit in his feet and tell him again, okay, yeah, I respect you. So I respect my position that yours is higher than mine, mine is lower than yours. And I'm sitting here and I'm asking you, okay, how I disrespected you so much in my life that you have to disrespect me and him in such a way. And then I hear the sins of your father, the, the mother the father are visited upon the child well the sins of the mother should not be visited upon the child my child should be with me like i know that sounds like a juvenile argument but if you're in danger where you at then you need to go back where you were and that's the way i feel about it so yeah the god passage was important to me i've been going through a lot of religious things and relationship changes and family changes in in my life and 
And yeah, I kind of do feel rejected. I'm going to say rejected by God because there's a lot of things that he could have did better to accept up, accept us and welcome us into his kingdom or welcome us into his grace. I'm not going to say mercy because I don't like mercy because people always want you to beg for mercy. And I don't think I should have to beg for anything. It should either be given freely to me or I can earn it without having to be in so much pain to get to where uh, I feel like there's an ending, you know, like a relief. Like, if there's something hurting you, eventually, if there's a knife in your back, someone takes it out and the pain is relieved. You get what I'm saying? There's a nail in your foot, someone takes it out and the pain is relieved. But you don't want to go through two years of pain. So, yeah. I relate it to the book, but at the same time, related to my life, and I always want to talk about that. So, I am. Alright. Next point. Uh... Like I said, man, I just want to highlight the most important things to me. Alright, so this is when Elias and Clara took a trip from where they were. And, and basically, they're mainly going on this quest for Salem. And I'm going to call it a quest for Salem. This is when they enter, they enter into what's well, like a cake party. A girl staggered into Elias's into Elias, stumbled to her knees and pulled herself to her feet using Elias's jeans and shoulders as a ladder. Thanks, she smiled and kissed Elias firmly on the lips. His eyes opened wide and he stood, frozen throughout his ordeal. It was hard to say if he enjoyed it or not. Deep inside, I burned. Why I didn't know, I had no claim, I, <clears throat> excuse me, why I didn't know, I had no claim over either the desirable half of him or the paranoid half. I had, or the paranoid half I had, I had helped run away, sorry. Was it a buried mother instinct? It didn't feel that way. This feeling was darker and heavier, and I stepped forward and broke and broke her of his lips. So that means that she separated them from the kiss. On you go. <laughs> she disappeared in the night. Elias cleared his throat. This is definitely not how he described it. His eyes twinkled. So it's better or worse? So far, it's better. Come on then. I grabbed his arm and pulled him toward the front door. Pay close attention to your bag, as it will be crowded inside, and whatever happens, <clears throat> I clutch his hand. And though I clutch his hand, and though he recalled it, I squeeze all the tighter. Do not lose his hand. It's not mine to lose, he replied. I want to say that so much better. Like I love this is page 92, and this is uh chapter 10. I want to say that so much di like differently. Like that's the cutest thing ever. She she tells him, "Do not lose his hand," and then he goes, "It's not mine to lose." That is like the cutest, most romantic thing. Like you would see that in a movie. It's special, and I like that. So, but at the same time, like while reading this, I get so irritated at Claire because it's like Elias is special needs. So are you really gonna date him, or are you gonna play with his feelings and his emotions? Like then she she always goes back to say right. Um, because I seriously do know, like, do you really like him? Like, cause you like, you act like you like him, like more than one time in this book. But she ends with this. I was helping half of him. I was using the other half of him. What I was running from had found me. Is it love that she's running from that found her? Is it connection? Is it family? Is it relationship that she's running from and had found, that finally found her? Like, I was kind of get irritated when she says that. It bothers me because she always speaks as if she's falling in love with Eliza. Eliza is still in high school and he's special needs and she is an adult. But she's a young adult. So, like, she has friends in college. So, I don't really get her, you know? I don't really get her. But yeah, I think she likes him. I think she's falling for him and his special needs. Now, that's from chapter 9. But she said that before in the beginning of the book. Like, she says things like that often. Alright, in this part of the book, before they leave and they go on a trip, Doucette and Rosario return. And they're talking about how they always come. And it says, okay, they grabbed my arm and pulled me into a room cramped with 50 easels. Forgive the mess. No, don't forgive. You'll remember us, you'll remember us from the lottery. I made quite the impression. My name is Doucette, and this is my sister, Rosario. We were hoping to speak with you soon, artists. So, Doucette and Rosario are supposed to be artists. It is an effort, Rosario said quietly. It's more than that. I gazed across the campuses. They're beautiful. At the compliment, Doucette giggled again. 
Please stand, take a closer look. And this is only two months' work. I wandered among the paintings of rivers and mountains, faces and festivals. Vibrant, alive. I wanted to stand among them, live among them. Is this France? I pointed to a landscape of rolling hills and poppies, like, you know, like the flowers. You sat and Roselle peeked at each other, and Roselle sighed. Actually, no, that is... Someday, interpreted to that, you said. We will have a show, and we will probably name it Images of Salem. Elias comes, in, Elias comes in here and sits in that rocker and speaks. I walked over... I walked over to the chair and rubbed the armrest with my hand, eased down into it, and then eased, and then eased down into it. Per perhaps it's not for you to sit in. He notices when it's off center. Doucette beckoned me to stand. Sessions aren't so good when he is off center. So, a lot. It's like when he can't get his focus or whatever. They don't have such good sessions with him. So, I take it what they do is they talk to him about his uh, trips, his journey, his life. Things that he's going through and then she paints, he, she paints images of it. I rose. So, you paint only his world? There is no place on his on this earth where we could experience the beauty as he describes it. Doucette sighed. We are the artists, but I think we do not see as he does. No, I imagine you don't. I stepped up toward a painting, an aerial masterpiece. The perspective dwarfed that scene. The, the perspective dwarfed that scene from the skyscraper's observation deck. That scene from the skyscraper's observation deck. How absurd to think the view I provide will put Elias off balance. So I guess she's uh, offended or saddened by the fact that if she changes anything in the environment, that it'll offset him or balance him. I don't know if I could date anybody like that. That I always have to worry about them. Like, going off on me or something. Like, if I do anything wrong, I couldn't. Because, like, I don't want to deal with your anger issues and I got my own issues. And I don't want to develop anger issues because I deal with you and the issues you have. So, yeah.